Welcome, dear friends, to a tale of love lost and found, where destiny takes an unexpected turn and second chances emerge from the mists of time. Enjoy the story. Sarah Baker squinted against the harsh mountain sunlight, adjusting her designer sunglasses as she reclined on a plush lounge chair. The crisp mountain air filled her lungs, a stark contrast to the stuffy boardrooms she was used to. At 38, Sarah was a force to be reckoned with in the business world, but here, in this exclusive mountain resort, she felt oddly out of place. Her new husband, Jake, a dashingly handsome 29-year-old, had insisted on this vacation. Come on, babe, he'd pleaded, flashing that million-dollar smile that had first caught her eye at a charity gala. You need to unwind. Three weeks, just you and me. Sarah had scoffed at the idea. Three weeks? The company would fall apart without me. She'd compromised on a week, but now, as the warm sun caressed her skin, she was considering extending it. Just a few days, she told herself. What could go wrong? Jake emerged from their luxury cabin, his sculpted abs glistening with sunscreen. Hey, beautiful, he called out, sauntering over to her. How about we do something exciting today? Sarah raised an eyebrow. Exciting? I thought the whole point was to relax. Jake plopped down beside her, his youth and energy a stark contrast to her composed demeanor. Come on, Sarah. We're in one of the most beautiful mountain ranges in the country. We can't just sit around all day. Watch me, Sarah retorted, closing her eyes behind her sunglasses. But Jake was persistent. He leaned in close, his breath hot against her ear. I heard about this amazing hiking trail from the concierge. It leads to the most breathtaking view you've ever seen. Please, Sarah, for me? Sarah sighed, recognizing the tone in Jake's voice. It was the same one he used when he wanted something expensive or when he was trying to convince her to attend another one of his friend's wild parties. She opened her eyes, meeting his eager gaze. Fine, she conceded, but just a short hike. I'm not dressed for mountain climbing. Jake's face lit up with boyish excitement. You won't regret it. I promise. I'll go grab our stuff. He bounded off towards their cabin, leaving Sarah to wonder, not for the first time, what she'd gotten herself into with this marriage. As she watched Jake disappear into the cabin, Sarah's mind wandered to a time long past, to another man who had loved the mountains. Pete. The name sent a shiver down her spine, despite the warm sun. It had been fifteen years, but the memories were as fresh as yesterday. Sarah shook her head, dispelling the thoughts. This was her honeymoon, after all. No time for ghosts of the past. She stood up, stretching her lithe body, and headed to the cabin to change. Little did she know, this hike would change everything. An hour later, Sarah found herself on a narrow mountain trail, her favorite sneakers already caked with dust. She'd packed them on a whim, a small act of rebellion against the closet full of designer heels Jake had bought her. The sneakers were comfortable, practical. Everything her life with Jake wasn't. Keep up, slowpoke, Jake called from further up the trail. His enthusiasm was grating on Sarah's nerves. I'm not built for this, Jake, she snapped back. Some of us work for a living instead of spending all day at the gym. Jake's laughter echoed off the mountain walls. Oh, come on, babe, live a little. This is what life's all about. Adventure, excitement. Sarah bit back a retort. She'd had enough adventure and excitement in her youth. Now, at 38, she craved stability, predictability. It's why she'd married Jake, wasn't it? a trophy husband to complete her perfect life. As they climbed higher, the trail became steeper. Sarah's breath came in short gasps, her designer workout outfit clinging to her sweat-soaked skin. Jake, on the other hand, looked like he'd just stepped out of a sportswear catalog, not a hair out of place. Let's take a break, Sarah wheezed, leaning against a large boulder. Jake bounded back down the trail, concern etched on his handsome face. You okay, babe? We're almost there, I promise. Sarah nodded, not trusting herself to speak without snapping at him. As she caught her breath, her eyes wandered over the vast expanse of wilderness around them. It was beautiful, she had to admit. The towering pines, the distant snow-capped peaks, the crystal-clear sky. It was a far cry from the concrete jungle she called home. But there was something else, too. A nagging feeling of familiarity, of deja vu. 
Sarah's mind drifted back, unbidden, to another hike, another time. Fifteen years ago. Pete, wait up! Sarah called, her 23-year-old legs pumping hard to keep up with her boyfriend's long strides. Pete turned, his rugged face breaking into a wide grin. Come on, city girl, you're not gonna let a little mountain beat you, are you? Sarah laughed, the sound echoing through the trees. Not on your life, mountain man. I'll race you to the top. They ran together, young and carefree, their laughter mingling with the rustle of leaves and the chirping of birds. At the summit, Pete pulled Sarah into his arms, both of them breathless and giddy. I love you, Sarah, he whispered, his eyes reflecting the vast blue sky above. I love you too, Pete, Sarah replied, meaning it with every fiber of her being. Sarah? Earth to Sarah? Jake's voice snapped her back to the present. She blinked, disoriented for a moment. You okay? You zoned out for a minute there, Jake said, his brow furrowed with what looked like genuine concern. Sarah forced a smile. I'm fine, just remembering something. Jake's concern morphed into a sly grin. Thinking about our wedding night? Sarah's smile faltered for a moment. Something like that, she lied. Come on, didn't you say we're almost there? As they resumed their hike, Sarah couldn't shake the memories of Pete. It had been 15 years since that fateful day, the day she lost him forever, or so she thought. The sun was dipping low on the horizon by the time Sarah and Jake reached the summit. Despite her earlier reluctance, Sarah had to admit the view was breathtaking. The valley stretched out below them, a patchwork of greens and golds painted by the setting sun. See? Didn't I tell you it would be worth it? Jake gloated, pulling a bottle of expensive champagne from his backpack. Sarah raised an eyebrow. You carried that all the way up here? Jake winked. Anything for my beautiful wife. Now, let's celebrate. As Jake busied himself with the champagne, Sarah wandered closer to the edge of the cliff. The wind whipped her hair around her face, carrying with it the scent of pine and wildflowers. It was intoxicating, familiar. Fifteen years ago. Pete, this is insane! Sarah shouted over the roar of the river below. Get away from the edge! Pete stood at the very tip of the outcropping, his arms spread wide. Live a little, Sarah. Feel the rush. The only rush I feel is terror. Please, Pete, come back. But Pete didn't move. He turned to face her, his expression suddenly serious. Do you trust me, Sarah? Sarah's heart pounded in her chest. Of course I do, but... Then trust me now. Come here. Slowly, hesitantly, Sarah inched towards him. Pete held out his hand, his eyes never leaving hers. That's it, babe. I've got you. Their fingers were just about to touch when a gust of wind hit them. Pete wobbled, his eyes widening in surprise. Sarah screamed his name, lunging forward, but it was too late. In a heartbeat, Pete was gone, swallowed by the mist rising from the churning river below. Sarah, what are you doing? Jake's panicked voice cut through Sarah's memories like a knife. She blinked, suddenly aware of where she was. She had wandered dangerously close to the edge of the cliff, her toes nearly hanging over the precipice. I... I don't know, Sarah stammered, taking a shaky step back. I was just... remembering. Jake's handsome face was pale, his earlier bravado replaced by genuine fear. Jesus, Sarah, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Come away from there. Sarah allowed Jake to guide her back to safer ground, her mind still reeling from the vivid flashback. As Jake poured the champagne with slightly trembling hands, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. A toast, Jake said, handing her a plastic flute filled with bubbly. To us, to adventure, and to many more years of happiness. Sarah raised her glass mechanically, her thoughts elsewhere. As she brought the champagne to her lips, a glint of something in Jake's eyes made her pause. Was it concern, fear, or something else entirely? What's wrong? Jake asked, noticing her hesitation. Don't you want to celebrate? Sarah forced a smile. Of course, it's just... the height, I guess. Makes me a bit queasy. Jake's expression softened. Oh, babe, I'm sorry I didn't think. Here, let me pack this up and we can head back down. As Jake turned to pack away the champagne, Sarah discreetly emptied her glass onto the ground. Something in her gut told her to stay alert, to keep her wits about her. 
It was the same instinct that had made her a successful businesswoman, and right now, it was screaming at her that something was very, very wrong. The sun had nearly disappeared behind the mountains, casting long shadows across the clifftop. Sarah shivered, pulling her light jacket tighter around her shoulders. She watched Jake as he packed up their impromptu picnic, his movements quick and precise. We should get going, Sarah said, eyeing the darkening sky. I don't fancy climbing down this mountain in the dark. Jake straightened up, his backpack slung over one shoulder. You're right, but before we go, there's something I want to show you. He held out his hand, a boyish grin on his face. Trust me? Sarah hesitated for a split second before taking his hand. Always, she lied, forcing a smile. Jake led her towards the edge of the cliff, and Sarah felt her heart rate quicken. They stopped a few feet from the precipice, the wind whipping around them. Look, Jake said, pointing out towards the horizon. Isn't it beautiful? Sarah had to admit, it was. The last rays of sunlight painted the sky in brilliant hues of orange and pink, the distant mountains silhouetted against the fading light. For a moment, she forgot her unease, lost in the majesty of the view. That's when she felt Jake's hand on her back. Jake, what? His voice was soft, almost tender. I'm sorry, Sarah. It's nothing personal. Just business. Before Sarah could react, Jake gave her a hard shove. She stumbled forward her arms pinwheeling as she fought for balance. Time seemed to slow down as she teetered on the edge of the cliff, her mind racing to comprehend what was happening. In that eternal second, Sarah's life flashed before her eyes. But it wasn't her successes, her wealth, or even her marriage to Jake that she saw. Instead, she saw Pete. His laugh, his smile, the way he looked at her like she was the only woman in the world. As gravity took hold and Sarah felt herself falling, she heard Jake's voice, cold and detached. Goodbye, Sarah. The world spun around her as she plummeted towards the mist-shrouded rocks below. Sarah closed her eyes, bracing for the impact that would end her life. But the impact never came. Instead, Sarah felt herself enveloped in a strange, tingling sensation. The rush of wind in her ears faded, replaced by an eerie silence. When she opened her eyes, she found herself surrounded by impenetrable darkness. Is this death? Sarah wondered. There was no light at the end of a tunnel. No deceased relatives waiting to greet her. Just nothingness. Then, faintly at first, but growing stronger, she heard a voice. A familiar voice, one she hadn't heard in fifteen years. Sarah, Sarah, can you hear me? Come on, babe, open your eyes. With a gasp, Sarah's eyes flew open. She found herself lying on a soft bed, in what looked like a rustic cabin. And there, sitting beside her, his face lined with concern, was Pete. Pete? Sarah whispered, her voice hoarse. But how? Am I dead? Pete's face broke into a relieved smile, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. No, Sarah, you're very much alive, and so am I. Sarah's mind reeled, unable to process what was happening. But I fell. Jake, he, he pushed me. Pete's expression hardened. I know, I saw it all. But Sarah, there's so much you don't understand. So much I need to explain. As Sarah struggled to sit up, wincing at the pain in her body, she realized that this was no near-death hallucination. Somehow, impossibly, she had survived the fall. And even more impossibly, Pete, the man she had thought dead for 15 years, was alive and sitting right next to her. Pete, Sarah said, her voice stronger now. Tell me everything. What the hell is going on? Pete took a deep breath, his eyes never leaving Sarah's face. It's a long story, Sarah, and you're not going to believe most of it, but I promise you, it's all true. As Pete began his tale, Sarah felt as if she had stepped into another world, a world where the impossible was possible, where death was not the end, and where second chances came in the most unexpected ways. The crackling fire in the rustic cabin cast dancing shadows on the walls as Pete began his incredible tale. Sarah sat wrapped in a warm blanket, a steaming mug of tea clutched in her trembling hands, her eyes never leaving Pete's face. Fifteen years ago, Pete began, his voice low and measured. When I fell from that cliff, I thought it was the end. But fate, it seems, had other plans. He went on to explain how an old fisherman, 
a hermit who lived off the grid in these very mountains, had found him washed up on the riverbank, barely alive. The old man nursed Pete back to health, but the fall had left him with severe amnesia. For years, Sarah, I didn't know who I was. The old man became like a father to me, teaching me how to survive in the wilderness, but always there was this emptiness inside me, like I was missing a vital part of myself. Sarah's mind reeled as she tried to process Pete's words. But, how did you remember? How did you know I was in danger? Pete's eyes took on a faraway look. It was about five years ago. I was in town, picking up supplies, when I saw your face on a magazine cover. It was like a dam breaking in my mind. Suddenly everything came rushing back. Who I was, my life before the fall, and most importantly, you. Why didn't you come find me? Sarah asked, a mix of hurt and confusion in her voice. Pete's expression was pained. I wanted to, Sarah. God, how I wanted to. But when I looked you up, I saw how successful you'd become. You were this powerful businesswoman, living a life I could never be a part of. And then, I saw you with Jake. Sarah flinched at the mention of Jake's name, the memory of his betrayal still fresh and raw. I convinced myself you were better off without me, Pete continued, his voice thick with emotion that I'd only disrupt your life if I suddenly reappeared, so I stayed away watching from afar, making sure you were safe and happy. Sarah's eyes flashed with anger. Safe and happy? Pete, I married a man who just tried to kill me. Pete held up his hands in a placating gesture. I know, Sarah, and I'm so sorry. I should have seen it sooner. Should have done something. How did you know? Sarah interrupted. How did you know I was in danger today? Pete's expression turned grave. I've been keeping tabs on Jake for a while now. Something about him never sat right with me. And then, a few days ago, I overheard him on the phone talking about a foolproof plan and how he'd soon be a wealthy widower. Sarah felt sick to her stomach. So all of this? Our entire marriage? It was just a setup? Pete nodded solemnly. I'm afraid so. Jake's been after your money from the start. He planned this trip, this hike, everything, all to get you alone and stage an accident. But how did you save me? Sarah asked, her mind still struggling to comprehend the impossible events of the day. Pete said she got off pretty easy. And why is that? Because she landed right in his boat, on the tarpaulin. No, it was a good bump, of course, but nothing critical. Sarah sat in stunned silence, trying to process everything she'd heard. Part of her wanted to dismiss it all as a crazy dream or a near-death hallucination. But the solid reality of the cabin around her, the warmth of the tea in her hands, and most of all, the familiar presence of Pete beside her, it was all too real to deny. So what happens now? She finally asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Pete leaned forward, taking her hands in his. Now, we make sure Jake pays for what he's done, and then then it's up to you, Sarah. I know it's been 15 years, and we're both different people now, but I never stopped loving you. If you'll have me, I want to make up for all the time we lost. Sarah looked into Pete's eyes, seeing the same love and devotion that had captured her heart all those years ago. Despite everything that had happened, despite the impossible tale she'd just heard, she felt a spark of hope ignite in her chest. I never stopped loving you either, Pete she admitted, tears welling in her eyes. But before we can think about us, we need to deal with Jake. He needs to be brought to justice. Pete nodded, a determined look settling on his face. And he will be. I promise you that, Sarah. Jake won't get away with this. As the fire crackled and the night deepened around them, Sarah and Pete began to plan. They had a long road ahead, confronting Jake, exposing his crimes, and rebuilding their lives. But for the first time in 15 years, they were together. And together they felt invincible. The next few days passed in a whirlwind of activity. Sarah, officially presumed dead after her tragic hiking accident, worked with Pete to gather evidence against Jake. They hacked into Jake's emails, recorded his incriminating phone calls, and even managed to get footage of him celebrating his newfound widower status at a local bar. I can't believe I fell for his act, Sarah muttered, watching a video of Jake laughing with his friends, a bottle of expensive champagne in hand. 
He's not even pretending to grieve. Pete placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. Don't blame yourself, Sarah. Jake's a master manipulator, but his time is up. Their plan was simple, but risky. They would confront Jake at Sarah's office, where he was sure to show up to claim his inheritance. With the help of Sarah's loyal assistant and the company's security team, they set the stage for Jake's downfall. On the day of the confrontation, Sarah paced nervously in a hidden room adjacent to her office. Through a one-way mirror, she could see her elderly chief accountant, Mrs. Rodriguez, sitting at the desk. Are you sure about this? Pete asked, concern etched on his face. Sarah nodded, her jaw set with determination. Mrs. Rodriguez insisted. She's known me since I started this company, said she'd be damned if she let that pretty boy get away with murder. Right on cue, Jake burst into the office, his handsome face twisted with impatience. Where are the papers? He demanded not even bothering with pleasantries. I need to transfer everything to my account now. Mrs. Rodriguez peered at him over her glasses, her expression neutral. I'm afraid I can't do that, Mr. Baker. There are irregularities in the paperwork. Jake's facade of grief cracked, revealing the ruthless opportunist beneath. Listen, you old bat, he snarled, leaning over the desk menacingly. My wife is dead. I'm the sole beneficiary. Now transfer the money or I'll... You'll what, Jake? Sarah's voice cut through the room like a whip crack. She stepped out from her hiding place, Pete right behind her. Jake's face drained of all color, his eyes widening in disbelief. Sarah? He stammered, stumbling backward. But how? You're dead. Sarah advanced on him, her eyes blazing with righteous fury. Sorry to disappoint you, darling. Seems your foolproof plan wasn't so foolproof after all. Jake's shock quickly morphed into calculation. Sarah could almost see the gears turning in his head as he tried to find a way out. Baby, I can explain, he began, his voice taking on the smooth, cajoling tone that had once charmed her. This is all a big misunderstanding. Save it, Jake, Sarah cut him off. We have everything. The phone calls, the emails, the videos of you celebrating my death. It's over. Jake's charming mask slipped completely, replaced by a look of pure malevolence. You ungrateful bitch. Do you know how hard it was, pretending to love you, an old, dried-up? He never finished his sentence. A fist came out of nowhere, connecting solidly with Jake's jaw. He stumbled backward, looking up in shock to see Pete standing there, his eyes blazing with fury. At that moment, the office door burst open, and a team of security guards rushed in, led by two police officers. As the police cuffed a cursing, struggling Jake, Sarah turned to Pete, a mix of awe and love in her eyes. My hero, she said softly, reaching up to caress his cheek. Pete smiled down at her, looking suddenly shy. Just keeping a promise I made fifteen years ago, he said, to always protect you. As Jake was led away, still shouting threats and protestations of innocence, Sarah and Pete stood hand in hand, facing an uncertain but exciting future together. What now? Sarah asked, feeling both exhilarated and overwhelmed by the day's events. Pete squeezed her hand gently. Now, we start over, together, if that's what you want. Sarah's answer was to pull him close and kiss him deeply, pouring fifteen years of lost time and rediscovered love into the embrace. When they finally parted, both breathless, Sarah smiled up at him. Together, she agreed. Always. As they left the office, stepping out into the bright sunlight of a new day, Sarah felt as if a weight had been lifted from her shoulders. The past fifteen years, her whirlwind rise to success, her sham of a marriage to Jake, it all fell away, leaving only the promise of a future with the man she had always loved. She didn't know what challenges that future might hold. There were still so many questions about how they would rebuild their relationship after so much time apart. But for the first time in years, Sarah felt truly alive, truly herself. With Pete by her side, she was ready to face whatever came next. Their second chance had come at a great cost, but as they walked hand in hand into their new life together, Sarah knew one thing for certain. This time, they would make it count.